All right, start recording. Get the splits ready. Start, and now we go. All right, now we can start for real. This should be fine, right? All right, so this video is gonna just be going over the beginner route. This run I spliced together. Um, it just has a lot of beginner strats, the beginner route, no RBA. Uh, it's no FFM, obviously. Uh, so it does two trips of FP. It has a lot of beginner strats sprinkled in. I'll try to... I'll try to, uh, mention some good cues and, like, advice as we go along. Most of this is gonna be a demonstration. And yeah. Yes, I'm splicing now. Confirmed. I've peaked. I can't beat my time unless I splice anymore. For all these quarries, you want to make sure you do a full beak barge. It's just good movement. And in general, in Spiral Mountain, you just want to maximize your roll as much as possible. Follow this route. I'm going to assume people who watch this knows how to do just basic movement. I'll probably link Apit's movement video um, in the description of this video. So that would be helpful to watch, just to learn about movement. And there's also the BK movement guide on banjospeedruns.com that you can read if you want. Although that's somewhat advanced, but it c could be good to gloss over. But it might be a bit advanced starting out. But yeah, uh, in this run, uh, I think this run ends up being a 209, uh, which is 209 with no FM and all the beginner strats. And I'm pretty sure I do I may I do make a few mistakes in a lot of ILs, but most of it's pretty solid. So 209 would be like a really good time with this route, I think. This has obviously no bit clips, the most updated friends fun, etc. Here's bottle skip. You just want to try and be up as much as possible and then jump far towards bottles and then peck towards the bridge if you can. It's a bit finicky, but if you watch over that part over and over and see exactly where I jump from, then you should be fine. Important to try and skip this grunty text during the roll so you don't get so you don't have to skip it while this jiggy is talking. Oh yeah, nice split, dummy. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> There's an impox skip in this video. Gonna do the most updated for his fun skip. So in Mumbo's Mountain, you're not gonna have Talent Trot, obviously, for a while. Uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult, I think, because you have to do a bit of slope abuse to go up the hills. For, just so you know what slope abuse is, um... When Banjo shadows over a slope where you can't normally walk, a timer starts ticking down. If that timer reaches like one, which is a bit, which is about a second, then Banjo will slide down. So you can do anything you want on the slope until that timer reaches one. So if you can get back on the slope, then it'll be fine. So here you'll notice I roll, jump off, and I don't touch the slope again. Make sure you do two jump flutters to get to that platform. You jump flutters again. One big jump, then another big jump all the way to the brown part. That brown part isn't a slope, so it's fine. Try to kill this enemy if you can, it helps a lot with lag. And then go to learn Beak Bust. Bottles will always give you one text box, unless it's the last move in the level. Then he'll give you more. Or if you lost a health, then Bottles will give you an extra text box to refill you. It's faster to just spam A to go up this brown ramp right here. This tiny movement thing, I'm not going to bother explaining it. You're just going to have to trust me on that. The token route in this category is actually pretty lenient. Uh, this route demonstration does show the optimal token route. Uh, the counts might be off because of splicing, but this is this will show you the optimal token routing. So you stick by this. It's not a hard route, obviously, just the tokens. But try and stick by what I get instead of yoloing if you can. This hill, do these, do it in this order exactly. Uh, if you want to look at my camera movements there for people who may be a bit more advanced uh, to try and do this faster, you can. The camera that I use there I find to be the easiest. For Conga, it's faster to get one orange pad now and two later. Just stand on the orange pad and wait till you hear the sound, then go get the orange, then go jump towards Chimpy. You're gonna get into Talent Trot while you talk to Bottles, so get in Talent Trot and press B while you're getting in Talent Trot. So you don't have to get into Talent Trot later. 
Do Kanga when his hand's all the way back here the second time. Make sure you skip Kanga's first text. Here, if you stand right about there, start from straight left on the joystick, then move the joystick gradually down. Then you should be able to get Kanga most of the times if you shoot three eggs. And you go hit this switch switch. Here, it's kind of difficult to get both of these orange pads in a row. I don't think I get it in this, but this is generally what you would do. Walk towards this shot, uh, this pad, then just jump towards the second pad. Chances are you won't be able to make it in one orange cycle, but it's still better to do it in this order anyways. The fact that you have to- well that's casual strats. You have to shoot three eggs to just beat Kanga. That's how you play the game normally. I think most people just assume people know how to do this. So if you want to learn how to do Ticker's Tower like this, this is how you do it optimally. I think I failed here, actually. I don't remember. No, that's fine. I know I do fail. <laughs> um, if you want to learn how to do this, I'd recommend looking at my RRBA tutorial playlist for 100%. It explains how to do this in depth and explains more on slope abuse. Uh, I would generally recommend as a beginner to do the first floor in Talent Trot, second floor without, and then third floor with Talent Trot. Make sure you get this Jiggy not in Talent Trot. And all the Jiggies in this game, except for the very first one in Mumbo's Mountain, so the Stonehenge one, you want to get not in Talent Trot, because there's a little animation that Banjo does uh, before he can start the dance if you get in Talent Trot. For Juju, I made a mistake here. Uh, shoot that first head like I did there. For the second head, you want to shoot two eggs. I, I shot one there, but you want to shoot two eggs because the Jinjo, like, sparkle effects makes an egg disappear sometimes, which is did for me. If you shoot two eggs for that second Juju head, then you should be able to make the cycle properly. So just keep that in mind. You have to shoot the very center of Juju in order for it to work. Here, take this line that I do here. Uh, just try not to wake up Mumbo. It's just faster to wake him up later. Make sure you don't roll too late here. If you roll past this yellow pathway, then your roll will stop. And... You'll go back to just walking, which can be awkward. Yeah, and you have to wait for Juju's head to fall all the way to the ground. Most of the time. You can try and push it, but it's kind of difficult. You see, we left that one note early because we get it now. Because there's no time difference now. Here, just land on this mountain as early as possible and then just hold the joystick down towards the water. And let go of Z before you enter the water to make sure you get that quick dive. Right? You basically just want to stand Banjo under the middle of the shadow of that Jiggy and then jump towards the water while that Jiggy's falling towards you. And then jump flutter back in the water or jump peck like I did there. Peck, out, peck onto this level pad to leave the level not in Talent Trap. You're going to backflip up, bear punch on this, jump back, flutter back on. A, A, B, A, Z are the inputs that I do there. You should be able to just spam that with a little space between the last A and Z in order to get that Jiggy. If you want to see a more beginner way of doing that or seeing how to do that more in depth, you should check out my RRBA tutorial playlist. Nice split again. I'm terrible at splitting. <laughs> Here, I made a mistake there. I, I tried pressing B. What you want to do is, you want to do what I did right there, except press B right before you land. And then that will be fine. If you press B right before you land, right in front of the door, you can start... Um, opening the door while Bottles is talking to you. So here you're obviously only gonna learn- only gonna open TTC. And now you're just gonna go to TTC. Obviously we're not gonna do, do, do TTC early in this. It's a beginner route. I think I actually, in this letter section, I might be about to- I might like, start going to TTC early, to the cannon. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that, just go- to that small platform right there, then do this movement right here to enter TTC. Now in TTC, this level is pretty difficult because you have just a lot of flight sections, and flight sections are hard. Here, flutter into this for the sound of two Kazooie noises, then let go forward, and just hold up on the joystick and you should be able to dip into that Jinjo. Most of this stuff is pretty straightforward and you can tell what I'm doing based on my inputs. Um, but yeah. For swimming, just make sure you're always holding R, of course. 
try not to cut too much corners, too many corners starting out, because it's it'll make you miss a lot of notes. Better to prioritize getting, making sure you get the notes before you prioritize cutting corners, especially starting out. This bottle will only give you one text box, unlike the FFM route that gives you two. I think I actually forgot that there. <laughs> yeah, the first tree is kind of rough. Try to get into this loading zone as you get in Talent Trap, then pause on the box for a tiny bit, then slide off and let go of Z. Just make sure you do that. I'm gonna roll a bit towards Blubbers and give him give him his gold. In that previous room, I'm pretty sure I only used the notches on the joystick. I don't think you have to use anything else. Just the notches on the joystick should be should, should be sufficient. So look at what I do there exactly to see how to do the swimming properly. For here, what you're doing is you're gonna count your flaps, do six flaps, hold down for two flaps, then let go of down, then turn straight left on I think about the third flap after that and you should get the honey the, the note and press a before you land this is a lot easier said than done right here press a right after the ginger goes off the top of the screen that's how you get that without accidentally climbing the pole then do five a presses after the green ginger to get to the yellow ginger then after you right before you get the yellow ginger you're gonna start doing eight a presses to get to the top of the lighthouse and you're gonna land on that jiggy, skip the dance, and then do that note order. And you're gonna beak bust the switch. Here, try and look for these two dots right here and jump in that direction. A pretty big jump. Should take two damage on that. If you want, you can flutter. Uh, to not take an extra hit. This is gonna be showing the optimal health management, but if you flutter there, you'll take one fewer hits, which will be more safe. You're just going to get these notes and climb all the way to the top and just beak bust the X. They're going to beak bust this, don't backflip like I did there. Beak bust this, then roll off. I like to zoom in here and get in talent shot on the box and try and go up these stairs. Hold R as you go up the first set of stairs, then try and let go of R and just take a straight line up the second one. If you do that right, you should be able to make it in and out in one cycle. Press C two times here with a gap in between to change the camera properly for that third flight of stairs. Do another quick dive there. Just slide on the ground a bit before you enter the water and it should be fine. Here you can do this note. You can you can do the note order differently there. Get the second note first, then the first note in order to make sure the crab doesn't hit you. For this section, you're going to take off. You're going to do one A press right away. Now you're going to try and just slide down beside the orange Jinjo to get it like that. Here you can go all the way in front of the alcove so you can see the Jiggy. And right when you get the Jiggy, make sure you press A twice fast because the just because when you get a Jinjo in flight or the final Jinjo in flight, it makes it a bit awkward when you're about to land. It sort of eats your inputs. It's just weird. Just make sure you press A twice when you get that Jiggy. For that quick dive, if you want, uh, for that quick dive, you can like look at my RRBA tutorial. If you need to because there's a couple of different ways to do that quick dive. So it's finding what's best for you. Nipper skip, I also cover there. Uh, if you want to do that, it saves about eight seconds, I think, to do nipper skip like that. Basically, you just want to walk in front of Nipper while he while his claw is pulling towards his face. Here, I was able to escape. Luckily, so I'm at two health here, which is optimal, but it's somewhat not somewhat risky entering Nipper. But yeah, I go I go to the right here to this tree. You can jump to the other from the other tree, but that's kind of difficult. So I just go here. I'm gonna get these three notes, and then get the X for Leaky Skip. I sh sort of take my time with the setup here to show how to do it. You're going to stand on a specific spot on the ground, visible by just the marks on the ground. Line up Banjo's right hand, I believe. Not here. Uh, line up his left arm with like the f the tip of his, whatever, the, the molehill. Poop two eggs straight while holding the joystick straight left. Roll flutter forward and try and talk to Bottles before the cutscene plays. If you do it right, only skip Leaky's text. Do not skip Bottles' text, otherwise your health will refill. Classic trick, yeah. 
You're going to count 8 flaps here, then press A to get this token. After about 3 flaps after this, you're going to hold straight up to get the nose to nosedive. Although you can just hold down instead there, so you can grab that with your feet. It'll make it a lot easier. Then just press 2A, press, press A two times after the last note there to get you a good height to get that jiggy. Try and get that jiggy in flight. Fly to the left of this corner. That's where this honeycomb is. You're gonna get this honeycomb in flight and press A twice. Fly somewhat towards the right of this note. Right around here, press A while holding up on the joystick a bit. Wait a bit and try and beak bust this. Should be fine. You're gonna try and land on this note, let go of Z and slide all the way down. That's actually a lot easier than it looks. It's just so you don't take fall damage. I was facing, a, I was a bit too far to the right there, but generally what you want to do to get the crap and the X at the same time is you want to beak bust past the peak of your jump and not on the very top of the crab's claw. Here, if you want to go, you can go all the way here to that corner to jump to the sandcastle. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Enter the sandcastle. You're going to spell Banjo Kazooie, then you're going to death warp. I do this death warp with two health. You can do it with three health. It might be a bit, a good bit easier for you. Uh, you're just gonna take a hit, then while you have the invincibility frames from the hit, you're gonna run into the crab under the middle of the jiggy, or under the shadow of the jiggy from any spot. Do a big jump and beak bust from where under the crab, from, from like over the crab. Remember to split, I will split this time. But if you can't remember to spell Banjo Kazooie, then you go into the middle of the room and then you go into first person and look at the wall. <laughs> So that's the 300 IQ strat. Remember to split. You know what's funny? This run right here is actually ahead of my PB. <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> Even with all the beginner strats. Make sure you peck on the, on the jiggy there. Now you're just going to go open clankers and then do clankers. Actually, you're gonna go open clankers first. Then you're gonna do. Then you're gonna open the cauldron. And then you're gonna do clankers. Here, sometimes you'll get a grunty text while you're pecking on the shock pad. You want to try and skip the grunty text right before you use the shock pad. Because if Grunty's talking while you try to enter the puzzle pieces, it'll delay Bottles' text, and you want to be able to skip Bottles' text as fast as possible. Just keep that in mind. Now we're gonna go open the cauldron. And then we're gonna enter clankers. The clanker cycle that I do is the beginner cycle. Uh, no jump at the beginning. Uh, but if you're just starting out, you'll probably struggle even to make the beginner cycle. So it'll take a bit before you can make any cycle. So just as a beginner, you might just wanna prioritize getting bubbles and making sure you're at relatively high air meter for the majority of the loop section. And once your movement is decent enough, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once your movement is decent enough at the beginning and your swimming is okay, then you can start making the beginner cycle. So here you're actually going to hit the other switch to raise the, the other pipe uh, after clankers because you're not getting the token. If you get the token there, which is not in this route, then you would hit that switch now. Just do two jumps and a big jump and hold R. Climb up the left side of this ladder. Jump flutter off before you reach the end. Just talent trot up and peck up here and get in talent trot here again. I'd recommend using this camera to practice uh, with a consistent camera because it helps a lot. As long as you can do this whole section without hesitating, then you should be able to make the cycle. If you stick against the wall and go full speed under the chompas, then you shouldn't take a hit. But yeah. That movement right there that I was doing, it's more than you would expect. It was a bit extra, and you don't need that great of a movement to make the beginner cycle. So, you know. Try and swim towards the top corner of this pipe, then tilt slightly up as you reach the other side so the slope will push you down. Hold up right around here. You're going to get this Jinjo from the left side, then turn to the right. You're going to get this note right here first. Now you're gonna get 18 notes, then the bubble, then you're gonna go through the key. 17, 18, the bubble, then the key, then after this key, uh, there should be a bubble right in front of you. 
if you did this right, that you should be able to get on your way down. The key pushed me down there, which is unfortunate. Uh, that usually doesn't happen, but I still make this cycle fine. Once you are confident enough in making the beginner cycle, or once you think your your um, movement is decent enough, I would highly recommend learning it as soon as possible. Because learning a cycle is infinitely better than just yellowing it. Skipping text, yeah. Skipping text is just you hold. L it, skipping text is a combination of LR and B. It can be in, done in any order as long as it's uh, all but all three buttons are held down. It can be LR then B, BR then L, LB then R, any of them. You're gonna come get this Jinjo, then you're just gonna rise to this platform. Here it's easy to use R to just aim towards the tooth if this cycle is not tight. You're gonna roll into this Jiggy here. <clears throat> Try and get into Talent Shot as you walk off here. Don't miss the note like I did there. I think I messed up the rings a lot here, but it should be fine. Um, it has a good backup, backup I think. It shows, demonstrates a good backup. You want to make sure you get into Talent Shot on this first box. If you can try and jump on the ring, then do it. If not, just do a big jump. I think I failed to jump on the ring. Yeah. If you fail to jump, do two big flutters. Then dive. One, two, you're supposed to surface on the third stroke. Jump, backflip. You're supposed to get on the ring, then flutter forward, but I missed. If you do that, make sure you flutter first and then dive. That's the proper backup. Big jump flutter to the top of this box, but I surfaced a bit early there. Get in talent shot on that box as well and go through two rings. Yeah. So for a lot of individual tricks or sections that you want uh, more of an elaboration on, I would highly recommend just looking at my RRBA tutorial playlist for 100% with FFM, because it will cover a lot of the individual tricks in depth. Get like two notes here and then go on the bolt. You can get all four, but it's kind of difficult. I'd recommend zooming out your camera for this section and keeping it straightforward. Just so you can use the notches on your joystick. Yeah, that was a great 17. I don't do bolt jump here. Just jump down. Mash A there. I just didn't mash A because I'm stupid. <laughs> but it should be fine. You can get the next two notes after. Then go to the fin. Still make it up here. You're going to kill the Champa. Then use a shock pad to go to the right. And you're going to climb all the way up this. Jump flutter right before you reach the last note. And walk off. Use a shock pad again. Yeah, you do gain a bit of height when you ground pound, but bull jump isn't in this video. Just beak bust this and try and get into talent shot as you walk off. That's the second fastest movement next to pecking. Uh, the honeycomb backflip. If, if you flutter there like I did there, that means that you pressed A too late. You want to press BZA all before you walk, all, all before you're off the edge. If you want even more of an elaboration? Again, go watch my video for clankers in my RRBA tutorial. Oh, I, that, that was a mistake in the rings that I beak busted there. Here, if you want, you can do big jumps for these alcoves. And you can still make the beginner cycle. Like this right here is the beginner cycle, I believe. Okay, yeah. Hold down, beak bust the switch right before you hit it. You're going to do this movement. Go a tiny bit to the right, then to the left. Big right, and straight forward in the middle. gonna jump flutter then roll back flip this fly section you're just gonna fly all the way to the front get the jiggy then fly up i do like i hold up for two flaps go to neutral for like three hold up for two more flaps and you can hold down to get this jiggy if you want it's a bit easier than holding up and getting it with your nose uh, but getting it with your nose is a bit faster than getting it with your feet like i did there but that way that i did right there should be the easiest here, just stick to the right and go into the middle only when you want to get the notes. I like to get that last note on the way back because I usually get hit by it if I try to get it on the way to the Jiggy. 
And same thing on the way back, just stick on the right. Now you can do a big jump into the water here. For this slope right here, you're going to just mash A into the slope. Roll, backflip into the water here, and you're just going to dive down for the jiggy. Hold down while you're getting this jiggy so Banjo faces up. Then just leave. Should be easy. You want to jump flutter up these, don't peck. Just a tiny movement thing. Peck into this jiggy. Uh, this section's pretty straightforward. Just get the nuts as best as you can and go up the tail. I would recommend um, doing big jumps up this tail and sliding a bit near the end. I just find that that gives you a bit more control. Here you're going to walk down onto this pipe, then walk off and get in and out of Talent Shot as you walk off. That was kind of a bad quick dive there, but I did the proper quick dive. Here, this is how you do snippets optimally. Snippets is not going to go well for a lot of people at the beginning. Stick to the right slightly, beak bust 2 at the beginning. Now, the way I do this here is I poop 2 eggs on this one, then the second one, then jump to the middle. What you can do is just uh, jump like around there uh, to get both snippets under you. Then you can beak bust those at the same time if you want. It's kind of difficult. Snippets are not super consistent starting out. So right there, I slid into the water and dove. This whole section uh, is under a timer, so you want to start diving as fast as possible. If you're not great at swimming, you might want to jump into the water so you have a bit more extra time to get the collectibles. But once you can do this pretty confidently, then you should definitely slide into the water and dive as soon as possible. Because we're going to leave this level by drowning. I will remember to split. This order right here that I do is technically a tiny bit faster, in quotation marks, than getting the Jiggy first and ending on the Honeycomb because you can, um, it's just less distance, so it's easier. I'll, I'll, I'll split, I will, I promise. This is funny, this run is ahead of the run that I did today. <laughs> Actually, this whole run is better than the run I did today. I got a 2.11 and this is like a 2.09. Leave this not in Talent Shot. Do a roll down left here. You should be able to roll again instantly. Just like that. You're going to jump up here. Try and jump under the Chompa here. And slide under it. Killing him is not a bad idea either if you're not great at that. But, yeah. Get in Talent Shot here and do a big jump. Don't roll off, just get in Talon Trot. I like to get three eggs and jump into the middle. Try and jump into the middle of the podium if you can. Now we're going to open Bubble Gloop. Bubble Gloop! Um, the most advanced thing to do in Bubble Gloop is to skip learning Waiting Boots. And that saves almost 10 seconds, but I'm not going to do it in this route, because it's pretty difficult, the health management is crazy tight, and yeah, it's just not easy. So this will have a nice beginner bubble gloop with some minor health management advice. Make sure you peck into the note doors, same thing as getting pecking into talent shots. There's like... You can quick dive by jumping in talent shot and sliding off. You can quick dive by walking, by trotting off an edge and letting go of Z at a good time. You can quick dive by getting in and out of talent shot as you walk off an edge. You can quick dive by entering gold feathers as you walk off an edge. Um, I think that's about it. Also, as you get out of Gold Feathers as you walk off an edge. Try and do that movement I did there. Losing too much health here doesn't matter too much because inside the levels, bottles will refill you. Ignore my negative jiggies here. I spliced this loading zone in. 
don't get the hive here. Don't get the hive behind bubble loop. Because bottles will refill your health when you're learning waiting boots. So you might as well just fill up on health there. Yeah, gold feather diving isn't used in this game. Well, it's not used in the optimal strats, at least. Here, tap C right once, hold up left, then shoot an egg straight forward. You should be able to get the Croctus. Then jump towards bottles. Let's get the text. You want to try and get into Talent Shot as you talk to bottles there. I just failed it. But yeah. Make your way to the ramp here. If you're fast enough, you can... Make a leaf cycle here, but it might be hard starting out. Just get all these notes in the order that I get here. Leave a note here for later, just so you can keep your slide. At the end of every jump, there's a slide, and if you reach the end of that slide, you lose time. So you want to try and keep your slide as much as possible. You want to jump up the cattails before you reach the top. Beak bust the very top, roll to the left. You want to just jump a bit earlier than I did there, I messed it up. It's whatever. Beak bars jump. Beak bust this from the side-ish. Don't beak bust from the sh from the top, the very top. Otherwise, there might be a dead zone there sometimes. Big jump to this note. Jump for each note here. Big jump to this last one. Here, you can do this movement, or you can just spam big jumps. Spamming big jumps is a lot easier to get to that log. But what I did here is a tiny bit faster. Beak bust this. Uh... Change the camera while you're beak busting. React to it. Don't predict it. Just make sure you're beak busting before you start changing your camera. Otherwise, you might accidentally gold feather. Just try and get these notes as best as possible. When you practice it, I would recommend practicing it with a consistent camera. Once you shoot an egg into that croc, just get into talent shot and jump straight down. Assuming you have that camera, that is. Make sure you get this token. Two eggs there is nice to get. BGS fourth in, as a fourth level is really nice because you can get a lot of eggs. A lot of extra eggs and... Resources. Try not to jump on that section. It's technically a tiny bit faster to jump at one point, but it's a lot harder. Big jump towards the left stump here. Get into gold feathers right as that flibbit is jumping onto you. Then kill each flibbit in the order that they appear in and jump into the last one. Don't get this jiggy now. Get this jiggy as a croctus later on at the end of the level. You can get that health there if you need it. Mud huts just you want to basically stand within the brown circles on the side like closest to the next hut do a big jump in talent shot and just peck at the right time it's pretty much as straightforward as that you don't have to do it if you don't want to each hut jump saves about three seconds uh otherwise you would just break the huts and use the shock pad here what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll down shoot the croctus as he's closing his mouth then you're gonna roll off flutter and try and beak bust the switch shoot roll flutter beak bust and now you can overlap these cutscenes. It's kind of difficult, but it saves a bit of time. And then get into Talent Trot as soon as you can. Don't do a big jump like I did there. Just do a small jump onto the hut. Make sure you slide off. If you spam A to jump off, then you might take frame-perfect fall damage by accident. And yeah. I'm gonna, uh, for this jump up to these boots, you want to just tap A with a neutral stick and then hold up. And make sure you peck into the boots. It's the same concept as pecking into Jiggies and... And the note doors. You can technically skip these boots, but it'll make, it'll make the health management a lot harder. This strat that I do here, uh, I like to zoom in while you climb up this cattail. Turn the camera to face towards that next leaf bud, or cattail. Big jump in talent draw and peck right before you hit the ground. Other, uh, alternatively, you can just like uh, jump to this cattail from the bottom. Whatever is mo most comfortable for you. That was an accidental hit. I got hit here. If you get hit here during the cutscene and you can move, spam A while holding upright in order to move during the cutscene. <clears throat> yeah, this BGS route basically just follows the Croctuses. That's how this level is routed. You're gonna wait like half a second after these, this one closes its mouth to shoot the egg. Then you're gonna jump into the Jiggy. No, it's upright, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's upright. It's upright, yeah. The camera changes a lot. I didn't mess that up. It's upright.
You can skip this text with only B. Leave that jiggy for later. I don't expect you to do this cutscene trick, but if you want to, jump straight down from the token, walk to the right of Tip Top about where I'm standing, skip the text, jump into Tip Top while the text is going away, then hold up right and flutter. And spam A. Then just do Tip Top. Nice rocket. <laughs> Most people write this down in their chat. The reason why that rocket thing happened is because I was about to beak bust that turtle, and right when you're beak busting, you go up and then you go down. What happened there was the cutscene, the, a different cutscene started while I was going up during that beak bust, so it kept my momentum in that direction. It's pretty cool to see. So yeah, just do tip, tip top as best as possible. If you end on purple or pink, then get into Talon Trot to get to the Jiggy. Everywhere else, just roll, jump, flutter. And you're gonna get the Honeycomb last before... Uh, you're gonna get the Honeycomb before the Jiggy, I mean. And then get the notes on the way out. Not terrible pattern. Don't enter Talent Trout there after red. That was just weird muscle memory I had. <laughs> yeah, you always want to get these three notes here. It's not faster to get them in any other situation. I've timed every possibility for that. Yeah. People used to do that either at the end if they end on red, but it's not faster. You're past the Jiggy, make sure you don't get it. You're going to get it as a croc. I paused to check health. So what you're going to do here is... Don't do what I did there. If you have 3 health leaving tanked up, you can get the 3 health there. You're going to do this maze with either 3 health or 6 health. If you have 6 health, then you get this first waiting boots. Then skip the second two. If you have 3 health, then get the first two waiting boots and skip the third. And that should be what you always do. Always jump with the waiting boots as well. It's the same thing as Talon Trot. Should be able to do a big jump to this last note here. Get into Talon Trot before you get hit and start running across the maze. After this, you should have three health. If you saw right there, I pecked in the direction of the Jiggy, then I beak busted. Uh, the camera got messed up there. I usually have a medium zoom camera before I enter the maze. So if you do what I did just there with a medium zoom camera, it'll be less wild while you're jumping. Again, if you have three health here, then uh, do the maze like this. Or if you really want to, um, you can keep three health. Because Vile without speech is kind of scary, and Vile takes two hits. Here you're going to run in front of the post, big jump on top of it, get this honeycomb, jump towards the token, peck at the end of your slide, walk, and transform into the croc. As the crocodile, you're just going to chomp as much as possible. It's the fastest movement as a croc. Pretty much everywhere. Don't run into the wall like I did there. Yeah. That was a weird- I wasn't holding the direction on my joystick there, so I didn't move much. So for Vial, um... I assume you're gonna skip past this. Right before you sp skip past this, I want to mention a couple things. Um... Optimally, you would get all of the feathers first round. Then I think the best thing to do, and you want to get the token during one of the rounds, so you don't get them afterwards. Um, if you can also get the notes in the other nostrils during the round, then you can leave through whichever nostril is closest at the end of the game. But yeah, just try and stick in front of Vile, uh, go for the ones that he's going for, jump on top of him and chomp the ones in front of him, you can. Other than that, it's just practice. So I assume you're going to skip the rest now. Break time. You can watch this and try and learn from it if you can. I'll be right back, actually. I'll let this play.
10 bagging can be a good idea, I guess, on the second round. I usually end the first round uh, at the very front of the arena, so I can get the stuff at the front of like the loading zone, like the token and the notes, at the beginning of the second round. I usually also sandbag in the first round by um, getting the collectibles first. The third round, it can be kind of hard. Uh, usually, you just want to follow Vile. Uh, I think sand. I think I think his rubber banding isn't as strong in this third round, in the sense that he won't go as slow as round one or two, if he is far behind. Anyways, general guidelines for Vile is just to get the get some that are very close to you. Um, get a lot that you see that are like bunched together and follow Vile. Following Vile and getting the ones that he's going for is the most important thing. And the timer changes at 1. Uh, whenever, whenever there's a 1 in the 1's digit. So use that to switch off before Vile does. That's the key thing you need to keep in mind for round 3. Yeah. And the minigame as close to Vile as possible on the side of him that's that's like towards the middle of the arena. Because he throws his jiggy towards the middle of the arena. Enter through whichever nostril is closest to you, assuming you got all the notes. And now you're going to chomp your way to the jiggy. Here, I like to keep a medium zoom camera for the hut section. You're going to get this first note from the left. You're gonna get the two, two notes on the left here, this one, two. Get two tokens. Chomp towards the Jinjo. Get the two notes that you left. And now get the Jiggy. And chomp your way towards the notes at the back wall here. A Vile Skip would be nice. And then just die on this Buzz Bomb. Remember to split. Walk off and on. <coughs> Make sure you chomp all the way, skip the text, stick as far right as possible on this section right here, because otherwise the raw guy might see you sometimes. Nice backflip, no one saw that. I should have just spliced that out. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, it's turning down the volume. That's funny. Whoops. There. Here, from the shock pad. Shock pad down left. And straight left here. For the second part of the takeoff. And just jump. Big jump to the hat. The hat, the green part of the hat is a slope. So just be careful of that. Make sure you jump off of it and into the hole as soon as you can. You want to enter talent shot here as fast as possible. That movement's the fastest there if you can do it. Jump flutter then get into talent shot in the loading zone. You're gonna peck this here since this is not doing RBA you're gonna get this. Get this now. Spawn the shock pad but you're gonna get the actual jiggy um after Gobi's valley. Oh god this guy's in the way. So don't get this jiggy now. You have to jump peck that door. You can't get that peck. You can't get that door from the very very bottom if you're like pecking to get out of Talon Trot. It doesn't. It just doesn't work for whatever reason. So you have to just press A and B as quickly as possible to break that brick wall. It is dumb. So FP one's really short. You're just gonna get a couple of jiggies and uh, the move beak bomb. Try and go around Boggy's text here. Don't worry about any notes. You're not going to need notes right now. Peck at the bottom, then jump on top of the present to Beak Bust. Gonna peck this guy. Walk here. Face down uh, under this present. Stick to the right side of this dot. Like all the way here. <clears throat> this just reduces lag and saves a bit of time. 
uh, when the timer hits 49, then gets in Talon Shot, and then you can go all the way to the edge. You want to make sure you make it as close to the pot as possible before the minigame actually ends. In this category, you're not going to jump down after this minigame ends because you're going to enter the you're going to enter the tree. Then you're going to jump up here. Stay up here. You're going to get this token now. Jump up and jump up here. Roll for this. Jump flutter back. Get into talent shot as you walk off. Hold straight down as you leave this loading zone. And hold R. Big jump. <clears throat> now go learn Beak Bomb. This flight section here is kind of difficult. What you're going to do is you're going to take off towards the green present. Do like six flaps, then Beak Bomb. Don't Beak Bomb at a downwards angle, otherwise you might accidentally land. Try and get this with your feet, I guess. It is faster to nosedive, but with your feet might be a bit easier. Then you're going to hold down, do eight A presses, then hold up, then Beak Bomb. Beak bump to the left of the snowman, then try and get this from the top, don't land, try not to land, then skip this jiggy jig, fly into the pipe if you can. It's okay if you land on the blue present, because then you can just jump into the pipe. And use the sled, gonna get this boggy jiggy, it should always spawn in this area I think. After this boggy jiggy we're just gonna give the presents to the kid, then we're gonna leave FP. And then we're gonna head to Gobi's. Don't actually peck into this loading zone. I don't know why I did that there. What you should do is just enter this loading zone in Talent Shot, then do a big jump straight forward. In between each present, you want to roll to the next kid. I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> gonna get that token. Try and get into Talent Shot as you walk off the table. Get the token, two feathers, and we're gonna just leave. Oh, remember to split. Nice volume going down. Now we're just going to go open Gobies, and we're going to do Gobies Valley. Gobies Valley, I do a very beginner route for this. Very easy beginner's route. It doesn't do Gobi Clip. doesn't do the species in the sand either. So, in Gobies, what I'm going to do is we're going to get the yellow ginger right away, then the notes on the ramp. Then we're going to get a couple notes on the paw, then we're going to go all the way to the waiting boots, and then get the notes around Jinxie. Then we're going to climb up Jinxie, get a ring, then shoot eggs from the cactus. We're going to do most of the uh, camera manips. At some point, you can get the rings in flight if you want, but... I would recommend doing most of the camera manipulations, except for like the first one. It's not too difficult. I'll mention where's the best place to get the rest if you need to. Nice music <laughs> from splicing badly. Big jump back, big jump front. Since you don't have the shoes, you're just going to cut this and go straight forward. Get all these notes. Get all these paw notes. Right around there. You want to slide a bit more than I did there. Something like that. Yeah, just like that to make it up there in Talent Trot. Oh, wait, I didn't splice this out. Shit. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to go forward. All right, this is fine. <laughs> no one saw that. Big jump to the, to the waiting boots. Oh, no. I messed up my splicing. No one saw that. You're going to get all these in Talent Trot. At the end of the waiting boot section, you're going to go to the top. You're going to go to this triangle right here because it's not a slope. You can stand on it without falling off. And you're going to climb up again, jump into the wall in order to get to the top without leaving Talent Trot. And then take off and fly into this ring. After you fly through this ring, you're going to press A one time and then just land on the cactus and shoot the eggs into the nose. If you want to do a slightly faster route, you can just... Skip the waiting boots and get the nose in the sand right away with just without shoes, without anything. 
What I tried to do there was I tried to get into Talent Trial as I walked off the cactus, which is fastest. Uh, but what you can do instead is just jump off the cactus right after you shoot the second egg. Here, I like to go to this, ca uh, that web right there and jump straight left. And you should be able to peck onto the carpet. Keep the camera like this. Go a bit past the f this square and shoot straight to the right. Aim towards that head and shoot three eggs after about two seconds. And yeah. There's a bit more detail to that. But I won't go over it here. You're going to roll for this. You have a lot of health in gobies here, so you don't need to worry about getting this this slap of health. And you're gonna get this final note and get out. Here, I do this- I have a video for this setup, you can watch for more detail. Basically, just walk out, turn the camera three times quickly, jump onto the notes, zoom in, then walk in a straight line, uh, like towards the ring. I do have a video tutorial on that. Just look up, look it up on my YouTube for Gobi's rings, and it goes explain that in, in a lot more depth. Right there, you want to try and, sh and get into Talent Trap right after you shoot the third egg, and then hold R. Here, you can get these feathers if you want. You don't need them, but they they are like pretty decent if you need them. They're like 0.4 seconds if you want all three. Gonna beak bust this and just roll down. Make sure you land on the first note and then roll. Here, just copy this pattern, however you can. You you definitely want to gold feather this mummy at some point. He just wasn't near me, so usually you'd you, usually you would gold feather him after the second egg tile. You can get that health if you want, but you don't need it. I have a whole video on this room as well that you can watch. If you want to learn how to actually optimize it, that is. Other than that, if you don't want to learn that right now, just copy this pattern as best as you can. Coming up, we're going to do a beak bomb um, to open Ruby's target. And then we're gonna uh, beak bomb towards bottles to learn speed shoes. I'm gonna show the advanced strat here, uh, but just know if you don't want to do this beak bomb towards bottles, then you can just get bottles after Ruby's Pyramid. Or after the ring after Ruby's Pyramid. Do not miss the camera. I'm gonna take off towards this with a zoomed out camera. Two A presses, tilt up on the joystick. Beak bomb this from the top. Try and beak bomb early. You're gonna do two A presses, or you should do three here. Beak bomb this. Now, if you look at the wall right here, I'm actually gonna pause it a tiny bit. Just so you can see the cue. You wanna aim so you beak bomb right there. Right there, right behind Banjo, you'll see two little dots. There and there. You wanna aim right there. A bit higher is a bit better. And get into Talent Shot as you learn um, speed shoes here. And then enter the pyramid. That's what you can do optimally. Um, and it's pretty lenient. And it's not that difficult. I would recommend trying it. But if you really don't want to do it. Then just learn speed shoes after the ring. After this room. So I'll mention where. This room if you roll straight forward. Jump flutter. And poop three eggs straight forward on the joystick. And three eggs straight down. Then you should be able to make it every time. Just walk in this room. Don't jump. Unless it's for this token. It's just a lot more difficult. Jump after this note, though. For this ring, hold down right, go to zoomed in camera, follow this seam, and just be on top of this ring. It's really easy. Don't miss like I did there. So, apparently that's the last ring. I don't really know why. But, regardless, uh, Right there, if you, if you um, if you want to learn speed shoes, there you can. I think Gobi's got messed up a bit in this video, but it's fine, honestly. I think there's one fewer rings than this for whatever reason. I remember having an issue on the practice ROM. 
Here, just beak bomb this rock wherever you can. It doesn't matter if you sand fight. In fact, you want to land. You want to take a damage in the sand. Because you have a lot of health. Make sure you do this in order, just like I do here. Now you're gonna climb up this. Make sure you slide on that button as much as possible before you jump off. Otherwise, it's kind of otherwise you'll just do what I did there and miss. Just make sure you cut your corners here as much as possible. <coughs> Make sure you jump back here, don't go all the way around. That will save you a good amount of time if you ever struggle with this. And this token is in this route, so make sure you get this. Get the token, then dive. <clears throat> yeah. So there's supposed to be one more ring. Excuse my bad Garby's video. I think something got messed up. But there's supposed to be one more ring in this video. Um, that you would get here. Basically it's the same setup as before when you're leaving rubies. Don't touch the camera here. Zoom out. And then just get these notes like this. Zoom in around here. Uh, go up this sand a bit. Look for this seam and follow this seam down again to get to this ring. It's not there, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> Again, if you really want to learn it more in depth, uh, look at my RRBA tutorial where I actually like stop in place to explain it more in depth. For Sandy, but I sort of just did it as fast as I could. But you basically want to do is just a short jump from the edge of this forward. Jump a bit left of straight up there to get on top. And yeah. You basically just want to go in front of the shiny part on the wall and do a big jump on top of it. Kind of difficult, but... I'm not going to explain it in depth here. Jump on these pots, into these pots. Those gold feathers are important, so you might want to get those. You're not going to get this token here, you're just going to jump... Oh no, you do get this token. Oh yeah, sorry, you do get this token. Want to quick dive like that. Taking a damage like I did there is actually optimal. So. Just make sure you touch, just touch the ground very, a very tiny bit, and then just walk up as soon as possible after the jump. Because taking damage there is good. If if you don't take a damage there, then it's whatever. At least you did it as fast as you could. Just swim around this way. Surface up here. Here you're just gonna hit Gobi. Uh, then you're gonna get the species and trunker. So here, uh, I do grab it at the end in this route. I just think that it's much easier to do it here because of how bottles is later. So the setup for grab at the end is very easy to actually do grab it himself. But um, the jump at the end to get to Gobi's is kind of difficult. I show how to do it here, and then I show a baby way that everyone should be able to do. Assuming you have the health. Right now you should have a lot of health if you haven't taken too many hits earlier on by accident. Do a beak bump straight forward with a medium zoom camera. Beak bump towards that black dot again with the medium zoom camera. Turn to the left and hold down and once Banjo's feet is covering the Jiggy, then beak bump. After you get the Jiggy, just spam Z to beak bust and make your way across the moat. I have an extra health here. Um, if you want to have the optimal health, then take a hit in the sand right before you climb up Jinxie with the speed shoes. So if you have an extra health here though, it'll be nice for this uh, slope abuse. I explained how to do the slope abuse like this in my RRBA tutorial, so you can watch that for info on how to do it. But if not, jump into the sand in Talent Trot, jump peck here, jump off, flutter back on, roll, then you can either jump or you can even backflip up. Because that slope abuse right there, if you copy it like that, that's very very easy. And just get all the notes and die. Remember to split. So for here, you're gonna head towards the shock pad, peck on it, 
take off, land right back on the shock pad if you can, and flutter towards the left side of this guy. Just roll into his cheek, get into talent shot as you walk off and get this token. Now you're gonna head to RBB, or no, you're gonna head to MMM. Open MMM, that is. Here I kind of made a mistake in this uh, loading zone. I had to splice this, <laughs> but whatever, it's not a big deal. You're gonna just peck into this door. You're gonna try and walk forward and get the talent shot in the loading zone if you can. Uh, if you get into talent shot earlier, it's no big deal. Don't roll there. So you should enter this room in talent shot, walk and do a jump like that. It's slightly faster. And you're just gonna swim to open MMM. This is all pretty straightforward. The only thing that's slightly difficult is chump jump. Um and the whip crack token is kind of finicky. Other than that, we're just gonna open MMM. You wanna do chump jump, swim towards the middle of these alcoves right here. When he notices you, swim towards the torch, then swim up. Big jump, flutter if you can, to stall it, then he'll chomp you right up. Jump across the alcoves. I messed up there a bit, but it's whatever. Here, I kind of messed that up there. From this token, Jump down left, just tap A down left, and you should be able to do a really good quick dive. You should be able to swim forward, swim out properly. So you want to make sure... This route is going to tag the cauldron in the FP lobby because you're going to go to FP after MMM, after the reset. So you want to make sure you tag the cauldron here. Um, don't land on the door frame beneath you. That's for a different route. If you're getting this cauldron, just go straight down right here and just flutter out of Talent Trot and shoot the middle of that web. If you don't shoot the middle of the web, then sometimes an egg won't count. Slide into the cauldron, then just head to the 350 note door. That note door actually wouldn't be there. <laughs> I'm gonna skip past that. That note door actually wouldn't be there for you in a run. It was just there for me because I was splicing it. <laughs> Whoops. Here, just stick slightly to the left of this. Left of these gravestones. You're gonna go on this black splotch right here, shoot two eggs straight forward, get into talent shot, and then go over here. Yeah, I had to splice it because I messed up lair movement. <laughs> so no MMM really. MMM, get these four notes as best as possible. They're honestly a mess. That's not easy to explain. Gonna poop an egg on this window from the bottom. Roll from right before the slope starts, and you should be able to, like, not have an animation after the roll. Here it's optimal to gold feather these barrels. Right from under that torch back there, you want to shoot an egg down right on the joystick. And that'll always break the proper barrel here. Get this Jinjo, and get out. Leaving here, you're going to do a big jump straight down, peck. Wait a tiny bit, then roll backflip. And backflip up here, get the note, and go straight forward. Turn the camera twice with the gap in between. Poop an egg, or peck this if you want. Then roll down. This is the optimal movement for here, but it's kind of difficult to do. So just do whatever works best for you. Just do the note order like that and stuff. Here you want to... Oh, I did the right note order there, nice. That's basically how you want to do that room. Just roll up left to get that to get to that shock pad. When you leave each window, you want to make sure you pause for a tiny bit until you land and then touch your joystick and jump. Do this room in this order. It's faster. There's no reason to do it the other way. Same thing here. Wait till you land and then touch your joystick. Get the notes like this. Here, just going to get the token. 
jumped on each chair. You can take this a lot slower if you can, but I would recommend doing this order and then just run into this jiggy. You don't even have to peck this jiggy because you do the dance after a text box, which makes you skip the talent trial animation. You're gonna shoot an egg at this door and then just leave. Here, jump straight to the left. As you're going through the beginning part of this maze, you want to try and slide as much as possible until the camera changes, and you can start jumping as much as possible again. You're gonna do this note order. Sometimes the ghost can be in the way. If the ghost is around here, go really far down here so he'll get stuck there. Just do that as best as you can. It's not easy to explain either. Maze movement is pretty difficult. Here, I don't do pots. Uh, if you want to learn how to do hive jump the way I do it, just watch my RB tutorial. I kill this guy with a peck, then I poop the egg on that. You can get that health if you want. Go to medium zoom, turn the camera like this. I like to poop an egg onto this, then you can just gold feather this guy, or you can gold feather him earlier and then poop an egg into the pot. Either way, it works. I like to use that camera, peck into the wall, then jump backwards a tiny bit to poop an egg into that pot. This pot's honestly easy. I would recommend most people try to learn like that. Uh, but if not, then you can always kill the pot. <laughs> or, sorry, kill the grave. Make sure you break that gate there. And don't miss that token. For Tumblr, I do beginner Tumblr strats. Um, enter in Talent Shot, one small jump, then one big jump, then peck onto Tumblr. You're gonna go pretty far onto the B and try and hold down right before the cutscene stops. This damage boost is the only one I would recommend doing. Going from the A to the N, because uh, that one allows you to do this rest of the room properly. You go to the O, then the K, get the note, stay here, wait for him to move, then go around, do the rest of this room. This is the, the safest way to do it, but it's probably going to be hard for beginners as well. So just do whatever you can. Just try not to get hit. Prioritize not getting hit. Right after Tumblr, you're going to roll towards the note and skip the text while you're rolling. And jump flutter back. And leave this room. Here, peck right before the shock pad. Hold Z while you're on the ground from that shock pad. Then, if you can do that movement, then yeah. That roof is a slope, so make sure you get into Talon Trot as soon as possible. Peck this gate from the middle. The middle of that gate is where the hitbox is to break it. To do this Jig and Joe Jiggy Jig skip, you want to stand far back on this platform and jump down towards the whip crack after it bounces the second time. It's pretty consistent, it's just kind of difficult. Probably one of the most difficult parts of MMM. In this route, you will have speed shoes, so you'll be able to do this safely. In other routes for this category, you will not have speed shoes. That is fine. In the church, you're just gonna- you're always gonna want to kill this first Teehee. There's no way around it. You're either gonna kill it, kill it here, or if he's not looking at you, you can get the note and kill that Teehee on the second pew. But always kill the first Teehee. I made a mistake there. You just want to roll back, flip. Change the camera while you're getting that note so you can see where you're going. I do this kind of fast. Um, just shock pad up here. Go around where this black uh, key is, then backflip to the left. Straight to the left. Skip the text while you're in the air, then beak bust. Now we're just going to do mod sand. There's a mod sand cheat sheet if you don't know how to do it. So you can keep that up during runs if you're starting out. Most of the resources... Should be readily available on the website, by, and it's organized by level, so you should be able to use that for a lot of stuff, a lot of individual stuff. Ignore that, <laughs> I just messed up the, <laughs> the, the pattern. <laughs> no one saw that, that didn't happen. Get into Talent Trap before the cutscene plays. Jump up right, then up left. Make sure you backflip up here. Uh, I think I do something weird here. Don't enter Talent Shot here. As a beginner, I would recommend not entering Talent Shot, jumping to this, then just jump flooding for all of these and getting the Jiggy here. I was just 
two use of muscle memory. And then just roll down on each of these pipes. If you can. Make sure you walk a bit before each roll so you have enough speed to do it. Taking off from here, you do four uh, A presses. And that'll get you enough height to go to the top. After this cutscene, hold R. Tap R, get into Talon Trot. Let go of R before you get into Talon Trot so the camera changes while you're getting in Talon Trot. Then you can see where this guy is. You're gonna roll down. Flutter, you can hold A as long as you want there. And take damage like that. Flutter back on. You have a lot of time here. Honestly, you can just do that if you want. If you want to get this without uh, killing the guy, stick at the f stay on the front of the seat on the second on the on the last pew, and head to the left, and then that will manipulate the ghost a bit. But um, otherwise, you can just kill him with the gold feather. For this section, uh, I think I do something a bit weird here as well. I started off with my muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do here is just go into each corner, jump, push the joystick in the direction of the note a bit, then just let go of the joystick. And you should be able to get every note with ease without falling off. Get this from the side. Do not hold Z while you're sliding here, otherwise you will fall off. Big jump and talent shot from the bottom of that into the note, and you won't take fall damage. Big jump here. Notice I have a lot of health here. I have, like, I think three health. Um, if you have, like, four health and you want gold feathers, you can take a damage by Lago, or by the Chompa inside Lago to get two gold feathers, and that'll take two hits. That would be optimal for me right now, because since I have three health, but I, d but I don't, I assume beginners wouldn't want to do one health well. If you want to copy this camera, I would recommend it, but... Camera angles may not be so important for most people starting out. You just want to cut your corners as pumpkin as much as possible. As a pumpkin, you're just going to jump as much as possible unless it's downhill. If you're going uphill, then it's a lot faster to jump. Here, you're going to go inside Lago. Get the jiggy and head out. See right there, you could get hit by that Chompa on the wall to get those two gold feathers. Here, hold left and mash A. And you should be able to get a jump like that sometimes. And head towards this. Change the camera so it's like this, it reduces lag. Don't touch the joystick at all while you're falling through this loading zone, otherwise you'll miss the jiggy. Just get all the notes and head out. Let me get this note, the one that you left here from earlier. Just head down. From here, do a big jump from right before the light part of the water starts. And you should be able to get up there. Get these two gold feathers here always. They're really, really helpful. Same thing here. Big jump right before the light part of that shadow of the water there to get to the top with ease. Here, this is the optimal movement. You could just take it safe and go around the whip cracks if you want. But this is the order of the notes that you should do. Now I'm just taking a bunch of hits because I have a lot of health. And yeah, it's MMM. Just leave the level just like that. Here what you want to do, stick to the right here, go past this dot going in this line. That's how that ripper will not hit you. Then just walk down this slope over here. Do a big jump here to go over this guy if he's in the way. Don't sacrifice your line to go to the left or right. Jump on top of the co coffin, go behind Mumbo, get his token, and transform. Ignore the 92 tokens, it's a, it's a splicing Everdrive glitched. <laughs> gonna roll down, jump, beak bust the very front of this, then walk off the lip, then beak bust again. If the ghost is on top of you, then beak bust down. Then if the ghost is like near you and coming towards you, then you want to beak bust right before you hit the ground. Otherwise, you just beak bust right away. I'm gonna skip this. I forgot to split. What am I doing? Okay, 
Okay, just go into your run file. Climb up the slope. Here we're gonna go use the cauldron again. So what you're gonna do here, turn the camera to face towards the eyes. While you're beak busting the second eye, make sure you can see that tunnel on screen. So you know exactly which way to head once this jiggy jig is over. I think I get hit here by the raw guy because he's a jerk. You. <laughs> Just slide into this cut cauldron cutscene. You can jump into the cauldron before the cutscene starts, but it's not actually faster. Then you're just gonna hop in, get in talent trot, jump a tiny bit right of straight down because you're heading towards FP two. And yeah, FP two in 100% no FFM is about is pretty much the exact same thing as 100% with FFM, except it just routes out Boggy's presence. Or Boggy's kids' presence and Boggy's kids, pretty much it. This FP two does a lot of beginner strats, uh, no yellow star, and it doesn't do leg strats. If you want to learn leg strats, there's a video by Hag somewhere um, showing the movement of what to do at the top hat, and I have a video on how to actually do the leg strats that you can use. Again, they should both be on the Banjo website some point or another. If it's not yet, then just ask like in the Discord or something. Anyway, shoot the star. If you zoom out, then the camera will get stuck and you should be able to shoot straight down. Backflip for this Jinjo. Jump flutter to this. Take off with a zoomed in camera. Tap A once. Peek bomb through the star if you can. Once you're comfortable. Once, once you're going through the second time, after you hear the ding, just peek bust and hold straight down. Everyone should do that strat, I, I, I believe. Even if they don't run through or fly th or beak bomb through the star the first time. Do five flaps here. Press A, then beak bomb. Then just hit every button. Then turn to the right. You're going to aim down. I believe I hold down on the joystick. Just aim down below the tree. Let's go over here. This token wouldn't be in the route for you, so ignore that. Yeah, it wouldn't be there. You would have gotten it in FP1. There are... How many notes are there? I think there's 12 notes here. I can't remember. I think there's 12 notes here. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There is 12, yeah. I made a mistake there. Just make sure you jump down towards the loading zone after the 12. Should be easy. Same movement here as before, hold straight down and do a jump. Head towards the flight pad. Uh, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna get this token now. And take off and you're gonna do snowman. Hold down, peak bomb right before the snowman is uh, under your feet. Or right before you're covering a snowman. You wanna be really careful with these snowmans, hitboxes will move while they're throwing the snowballs. So either shoot way before that or wait wait to beak bomb them after. Your beak bomb is always aimed towards the center of the camera. So just keep that in mind. You want to try and beak bomb that snowman to the left of his hat if possible, if it's not too hard. So you can beak bomb this loading zone right away. Because if you beak bomb right away here, then there's almost no chance that you'll bonk. Here you're going to get in talent trot. Uh... I don't know what I'm doing here. This note order is not the most optimal, but the optimal note order is kind of hard. This is just easy because you can end on the Jinjo. End on the Jinjo, slide off, then slide onto the pad and mash B. Then you're just going to transform and leave. Wall section should be really easy. There's, we're not going to do a right leg. We're not going to do uh, the leg strats in this video. There will be extra videos you can use to learn it if possible. If you want. I'm just gonna get these notes. And head to the race. Yeah, we're doing a video tutorial for 100% no FFM, the beginner route, without RBA. Without Boggy Races the B. Walrus movement, same as pumpkin movement. Jump everywhere except for downhills. Jump hills especially. Uh, jump up hills especially. If you jump right after you land on that sled, you can get a jump before the race starts. Walrus... Uh, race should be easy. Just get these two notes specifically, and the Jiggy, if you're not doing, uh, the leg strats. 
you basically should be able to do this as fast as you can. Make sure you jump up that hill. It's very important because that will give you a lot of speed. Going down this hill, you just want to slide and start jumping again here. Get the right note. You can get multiple notes on the hi on the houses here if you're not comfortable getting them during the race. Make sure you get both of these notes here in the water. You need to get them now. Otherwise, get them before this race if you're not comfortable with it. You can get that note now. I missed it, but that's whatever. And yeah, you should be able to just do this as fast as you can. Do a big jump from the bottom of this slope. Big jump towards this note. Jump again. Just run all across. Jump into this token, then jump towards here. Uh, now here you can get two notes, depending on where Boggy is. I could have gotten it there, but I just missed. But if not, just go straight for the finish. It's not a big deal. If you don't get any notes, then after the jiggy, uh, start from the bottom and then go from the top, and then go to the top for all the notes. You don't want to get any notes here as BK. Skip this te or speed up this text by just holding A. If you have three notes there or two, start from the top and go down. Now you're gonna get this token and you're just gonna head back. Stick as far right here as possible. So after here, just go towards this shiny part, just like that. Because there's no present there, because we, we did that in FP1. So now we just have to go back to D-Transform. And that's it for the walrus section. It's pretty straightforward. The race shouldn't be that difficult for most people. Here you're just gonna walk down this hill. Don't jump. Just walk down and jump. Do a big jump right before you reach the water. And peck right before you hit it. You can, just like that. Jump flutter out and just head towards the scarf. You can get these, this health and these gold feathers if you want, but beware you might have too much health if you get that. I like to zoom in here. Just if you want to do lag, if you want to worry about lag reduction, all that matters here is that the snowman's belly is not on screen as much as possible. That's all that really matters here. I like to zoom out here. So here, if you don't do leg strats, then you're gonna get this blue ginger later. If you do leg strats, then get this ginger now. But if you don't do leg strats, this is what you do. Skip that ginger right there. Um, chalk pad up. Take off, up left. Two A presses and hold up on the joystick. And you're gonna go this way around the hat. Right before the last note, you're gonna he head towards the, the ice cube. So right now. Peck, jump peck. Now you're gonna roll towards the note, I believe. Roll towards the note, jump flutter, roll off. Flutter onto the blue Jinjo, roll down here. Then just beak bust recoil off. It's okay if you land in the water, because you want to take a hit anyways, but you just want to do that. Head to this note right here specifically, then start making your way around. You might want to rewatch that a couple times just to make sure you do the right order. Just to make sure you do this note order. After this note, you should be able to. You should be really close to where the race is. Do this note order just like this. Big jump towards Boggy. All day to speed up his text and race him. This race should be even easier, I think. You should be able to go as fast as possible. Just go as fast as possible. Um. Don't jump at the beginning here, but now you can start jumping. The camera might get messed up if you jump too early. Make sure you jump up this slope. You're going to get the green ginger during this race. You really want to make sure you get this during this race. It should be like the one thing that you need that you should get during the race. Get the notes on the roof here. Two if possible, this optimal. So get this green ginger here. On this second house, make sure you slide off. Don't jump off, slide off. Because that will make Boggy go a lot faster here, which is scary, but... It makes the ending a lot, a lot easier. Because now you can just go as fast as you possibly can, and you'll always win. Walk down this slope to get all the feathers, get this one note, then just head straight to the f finish. And look how far away Boggy is. He's very far back. 
going to do a big jump towards that Jigging Packet. I'm going to jump down here, jump right after the second feather, pick out a Talon Trot and roll back flip to this Jinjo. If you can, jump out of that alcove with the Jiggy in your hand, it's faster. But if not, it's not a big deal. Just be careful here. Uh, I like to do like two jumps and intentionally drop my slide. Then do a big jump towards the wall. Take a damage, then just run to the finish. Here, uh, five health is optimal. If you have six health, just keep swimming and take an extra hit. I think this will look a bit funky here because I spliced something. Yeah, that's fine. That's basically the movement you want to do. Split. Oh, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> here, you're going to go use the shock pad now. Don't get that token now because you'll get it later. Go behind the wall here to be bust the switch. So for this web, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this, but if you want, if you don't want to get this web during this timer section, get it right after you enter this loading zone. Just peck into this loading zone over here, then shoot three eggs straight forward. You take off towards the eye here. Tap A once. Beak bomb. Go over here-ish. Go down. Go perpendicular towards the jiggy. Press A right before and hold slightly up on the joystick. That should be the easiest way to get it to uh, without landing. Just make sure you have enough momentum while you try it. You can also try and get it with your feet, but that has a bigger chance of landing. Don't press A there like I did. Press A after you leave the tunnel. Press A a second time. Go towards the middle of this alcove, or the advent counter thing, and beak bomb. Bottom middle. Get in talent shot on that token. The token will be there for you. It wasn't there for me just for whatever reason. Get in Talatron on that token, get the speeches, and head towards the 450 note door. Then you're heading out. Now you're just going to swim to open RBB. RBB, there's not that many beginner strats you can do, I don't think. There's a couple. Engine room is the main thing that most people struggle with. Uh, there's not really a way to... There's not really a beginner way to do it. Uh, so just do, just, just progress through engine room, however you're comfortable with. Wait for things to stop if you need to. Um, and just pay attention to how I set up the camera for the fan clips. If you want a much more in-depth explanation for engine room, go watch my RRBA tutorial playlist, uh, in engine room. And it should cover it there. It'll cover it a lot more in-depth. Oh yeah, we're just gonna open RBB then enter. Alright, so for the first room, the first pipe room, uh, I do it a slightly baby way. Nice audio from splicing. <laughs> we'll see. Let's get the fir first notes and jump into this room. Big jump down, starting down left and tilt to the r left to get up here. Peck there, roll, peck back for that guy and get in town shot and walk off. And basically do it like that if you can. That's the order and the method that you should use starting out. You may not do it as fast as that, but that's generally the order that you should do. And to peck this, right when you enter, hold straight down. You can flutter really early for this and still make it. I flutter pretty early there. If you do it somewhat fast, you should be able to just make this. You should always get that token on that cycle. Jump in diagonals here. To make sure you get your jumps off right away. Jump into the very middle of this. It should be still if you did it fast. Here you can obviously either just wait for them to stop. Or you can go as fast as possible if you want. Here you can start going when it's like completely tilted. Or you can just wait until it stops. Either or. It's really all there is to it. You just wait or go. Here you can just 
set up the camera so it's straightforward, run into it, then roll and press A. Just tap A right before you touch the fan again. You're just taking advantage of your invincibility frames uh, to go through the fan. Back out of Talent Trot, run in, roll, jump forward. And that's pretty simple. Here you want to have, you want to make Banjo face slightly to the right. The camera will face wherever Banjo's facing once the cutscene's over. You're going to roll towards the room window. You're going to walk from this wall to this wall. If you do that over and over again, then, um, nice nose. Then you should clip. Okay, ignore that terrible movement. <laughs> Just get those notes as best as you can. Those notes are a pain. Here, uh, right when you leave that loading zone, hold Z and tap C left, C down, and C right. Just to switch the camera and get in Talent Trot. Just get the notes as best as you can. If you need to, after the boat notes, you can just quick dive down to the propeller to the propeller jiggy and get that earlier on if you're not comfortable with your timer section. Just if you if you're not comfortable with it. Like you can get this jiggy earlier and then get the other notes by the hive, then the pink ginger after. If you're at low air here, go use the box. Surface and jump on the box to the right there. And then once you're on the box, you can just get into Talent Trot and do a big jump right away and you'll always refill on health. Here, uh, you're just going to kill this guy. You can just do a big diagonal jump across. Or you can just kill all of these guys. It doesn't really matter. If you're going to jump back there, that's good. I just messed it up. I wasn't going to show the slope abuse anyways. Just jump towards here as fast as possible. When you're going up these slopes, you should just run up a tiny bit. Double tap A. Press B to roll then do a jump flutter. Alternatively, you can just jump up the slope, then you can backflip to the uh, platform as well. That's the easiest way to do it. But I would recommend doing the AAB method. If you want to get the gold feather, climb up the right side of the ladder. If not, climb up the left side. Jump after the third black line towards this witch switch. That's the earliest you can jump. For boss boombox, or well, for this movement, you're gonna get in talent trot. Hold straight down, jump until you see the uh, sky right under Banjo, then let go of A. Shoot three eggs. You're gonna just pick out a talent trot, gold feather, then jump into the into the jiggy. Just make sure you shoot three eggs before you get in talent trot, and it should be as simple as that. And you're just gonna leave and climb up. I did what was known as a quick climb there. You shouldn't do it, honestly. It's not worth it. I'm just scuffed <laughs> yeah top the mole to poop an egg into this window if you can just like that head towards the back left note here this grublin is always in the same spot so he should never hit you uh which means that he's also a good place to get health if you need it hold the camera so this ladder to get to it you want to do a jump you want to hold the joystick slightly right or straight down do a big jump right before you touch the wall of the ship then hold R, and then just jump towards the ladder and pack. Going in this room is, this room is quite difficult. Just try and copy the inputs. Take this slower if you need to. If you miss this, you can jump onto this, jump on here without leaving Talent Trot, then you can go back on top there. I just demonstrated it there. And then you should leave the room with by jumping up those specific boxes. I'm on top of that, slide off, then slide back in. Just like that. Big jump for these two notes, slide down. Here, I just peck right after. Right here, roll, jump, roll, jump, roll, jump, roll, and jump out. I meant to get into Talent Trot there, but it's whatever. Turn the camera four times quickly, then just jump straight up here. Aim for that dot right there, jump back off and on. This, this slope view should be easy for most people. If not, if you can't do it, then just do what I did earlier for jumping up the slopes, A, A, B, A, or backflip up, either way. Here, I'm not going to show left, but jump, obviously. Uh, to not get hit by that TNT, make sure you stick at the back wall back there before you take off from the shock pad. I'm going to roll backflip up here. And just jump flutter, get into talent trot, then just hop off. After a bit, just like that, just flutter, roll into this jiggy.
You have good enough movement, you can make it into that before the cutscene starts. Here the movement's kind of awkward. If you want, just stay still, add a couple notes for the camera to settle so you know where you're going. Like, this stuff is pretty straightforward, you just get the notes as fast as you can. Uh, a lot of rooms somewhat have fixed movement. This room, what you want to do is flutter towards the Grublin, make him see you, then go in front of the closet, start gold feathering, gold feather the Grublin, make sure you gold feather the Chompa before you jump. Here, hold straight right while you're leaving, do a big jump right when you land, and you should be able to do a big jump up left right when you touch the hoist. If not, go to the pipe where the kitchen is, uh, jump on top of that, and jump on top of that if you want to go up there easier. Here, just go these ways around the funnels. It's just the best in terms of lag. Here, if you roll off like that, do not backflip. Absolutely do not backflip. There's no reason to. Here, do a big jump. If you beak bust after a big jump like that, you will not take fall damage, so it's fine. Then just do the code 312111. Don't backflip like I did there. You want to run onto like the middle of the two uh, at the end. Get the jiggy during the cutscene. Get in talent trot. Tap A down right after you get that and peck the, peck the window there. You're going to get this token first, then these notes. These grublins can be kind of finicky sometimes. Just make sure you don't get hit by the grublins before you get the token. Otherwise, the game can soft lock. You're going to get this... Do a big jump from there to get here. Honestly, a bit easier than it looks, but it does take a bit of getting used to. There, I didn't jump high enough before I pecked, so I didn't actually peck the window. Here, obviously, same thing. This room has an entirely fixed camera, so just do everything as fast as you can. If you need to wait, then just wait for the camera to settle what you would do in general for rooms with a fixed camera. Swim into here. I would highly recommend swimming into here with three health. So just make sure you plan out your health a bit more beforehand. If the health counter is not on screen, that means you have three health or more. If the no honeycombs are here, then just walk straight forward and talent try. You won't get hit. I hit by that guy, but that's whatever. Same thing on the way back. Do that note order that I did there. It's the best way to not get hit by those guys, even though I got hit. That was just me being bad. Get into Talon Trot, big jump, and just, again, walk straight forward. Go to the middle and walk straight forward. Then you can just do a big jump to leave. Yep, so here, jump flutter. The way this works is you're gonna peck Snacker to recoil onto the buoy to get the Jinjo. Pecking Snacker just makes him go away. You're gonna go off the buoy, jump from the water onto the Jiggy when this is facing down. When the buoy is facing down. Do a big jump, and if you do that, then you'll go from the water to the Jiggy without touching the ground, which makes the game sort of still think that you're in the water, which will allow you to skip the Jiggy Jig. Just make sure you do not flutter onto the Jiggy. If you do that, then it won't work. Surface right here after three strokes. Then go all the way to here to hit the button. If you have 3 health, get hit by the Chompa to take 2 hits. If you have 2 health, then get hit by one of these um, lifesavers to get down to 1 health. Yeah. You're gonna peck out of Talent Shot on the ground, then jump peck this guy to kill him. Take off. After 4 flaps, then press A to get the Honeycomb. Wait a tiny bit after you get the Honeycomb, then Beak Bust, and you're done with RBB. Just like that. Now we're gonna head over to Cliff Lockwood. Cliff Lockwood is pretty straightforward. This run will not do soft lock. Uh, oh yeah, and you're gonna get this jiggy here. It's not this jiggy's not here on this file because EverDrive reasons. So sorry. Just gonna get this jiggy, do the dance, ba -ba 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 -ba, then just get into Talentron and jump like that. 
You're gonna do that movement. Jump flutter into the note door. Try and enter this note door in Talent Trot. Uh, if you enter this note door in Talent Trot, then you're just gonna hug straight to the left. If you don't enter this door in Talent Trot, then just jump over that first one. Hug the left wall, jump over the right, right before that second last whip crack, then go straight forward. You want to do leaf jump? That's the setup right there. Uh, I'll just watch it again, I guess. There's a little mark on the ground right here, right here. You want to put your feet on it, just stand on it. Backflip straight down. Backflip straight down again. Get into talent trot. Jump down left and up left. No, no, sorry. Down. Yeah, that's right. Down left and up left. Then big jump up. I just left that in so you can see the inputs for that. Uh, if you want to actually do it. Because if you don't want to do leaf jump, then it's really straightforward to just go use the leaves in front of Frame Spun. But yeah, now we're just going to go open Quick Clockwood. And use the cauldrons. Again, just activate this cauldron as early as you can. Slide into it. Jump down right. Jump flutter down right right away. Gonna do three short hops. One, two, three. Then this is gonna be a quick dive. Just let go of Z right after you go off. That's as straightforward as it is. You're just gonna surface right here. When you're surfacing from swimming, you want to try and surface at the end of your strokes, at the end of the fast part of your stroke, just to optimize the fast parts so you don't uh, surface after the slow part. In the talent shot, do a big jump down and right into the tunnel again, and you're gonna swim back. Jump flutter, again talent shot, and we're gonna go back. If you change the camera like that, you can sort of push yourself into the wall as you're jumping to not accidentally go in the water. Sometimes that raw guy can be in the way and he's a pain, but not much you can do about it. Here, you're just gonna enter Click Clockwood. Technically, it's faster to do big jumps up this hill. I don't know why I did small jumps, but just do big jumps up this hill, this slope. It's just slightly faster for whatever reason. Here, Click Clockwood. Flutter down, roll, jump, flutter, roll, jump, beat us. A bit choppy, that's fine. I'm gonna get the two left notes first in this route, no soft lock. Because you're gonna leave spring from the entrance. Right there, you wanna try and roll backflip if possible. Try and get backflip onto that leaf from the front. There, I just messed it up. You can just, if you wanna get to the top in Talent Trap, make sure you're at the very tip top of those leaves. Then just jump straight forward with a lot of momentum into the wall. Otherwise, you can just backflip up. It's technically faster to get these three notes in spring two, and you can do that if you want. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't is if uh, you're kind of scared of winter, because um, at the end of winter, uh, if you die, then you'll have to recollect your notes if you do it optimally. So I would recommend most people get those notes at the at spring too, those first three notes. Anyways, just follow this pathing. This guy was really far away from the note or uh, from the switch from the switch. Uh, I was about to get it there, but I missed. Most of the time you'll kill that grublin. And go free Irie. Get this token. I like to zoom out here as well. A slightly more aerial view is aerial view is nicer. Dog pad down onto the this side of this. Now don't do that. Just try and beak bust that as early as possible. Beak bust that while you're in the air, while you're fluttering. Here the easiest way to do this. Go to this egg right here and do a big jump down. I slide down by accident. But if you do a flutter like that, you're just gonna flutter off to that side, then flutter back on. Just just take damage onto the platform. Then fall off the platform while you're taking a hit, then flutter back on when you after your shadow goes off. Hug this side of the fence, then shoot five eggs straight into the middle, then get into Talon Trot. Make sure you're hugging the back wall of that fence. 
I'm gonna get all these notes and then you're gonna head out of spring one. You can jump around these birds if you want, or just wait. Or even kill it if you want. Although that one you probably shouldn't kill. For this high uh plant, if you stay to behind its eyes, you can get its token without taking your health like that. Just stay behind its eyes. Otherwise you can just jump into it, take a hit, and get the token. I would recommend getting that token no matter what. Even if you take a hit, you can just refill on this high right here if you need to. But you should definitely get that token in pretty much every route. I'm gonna straight forward. I'm gonna get the, the worms. Make sure you're far enough. Backflip from like the middle of these leaves or from a bit more from the left in order to get onto the second one. Just backflip to the right of that bird and just jump around it or kill it if you want. For these birds, I'd highly recommend just doing this movement. Jump, keep your slide, jump, wait for it to go inside, keep your slide, and just jump. I highly recommend doing that. Uh, I don't know why I went there. You wanna peck here, beak bust like right before this. Try and get into talent trot as you walk into that loading zone. And then just hold straight down. If you're if you enter in talent trot. Here just gold feather all these guys. You can just stay still if you want. I don't actually know if moving on this saves time or not, but it doesn't matter too much. Get into talent trot, go this side up this um inside the hive because this loading zone's on the left i would recommend getting in talent trot turning the camera once to tapping a while holding straight down while letting go of z and you should be able to just flutter for as long as you want i would definitely recommend looking over that looking over the inputs that i do there and practicing that because that method is a very very fast and b very 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 easy definitely the method most people do for the majority of their like dk career Unless you want to go to like the very top level and do a slightly faster strat that saves like half a second. But that way that I did right there is 100% consistent and it's very easy. Anyone can do it. Here you want to beak barge the boulder. Peck, beak barge, like that. It's actually faster than beak busting. If you want, you can peck onto the top of the boulder and gold feather it. That is slightly faster if you have the gold feathers to do so. I'm gonna go behind from this way to get the worm and climb up. Now you're just gonna make your way to the leaves. Cut the corners as much as you can without falling off. Here, you can jump around that bird. That's what I do, but if you want, you can just wait as well. Do a big jump to get to the second leaf. Big jump to get to this. Just pecked with a neutral joystick on that. This is really as straightforward as this is. You don't have to flutter onto every leaf. This bird I would recommend killing. Especially in the soft lock route. Or sorry, in the no soft lock route. I'd recommend killing the birds. Because of what you have to do in a fall. Here. It's honestly just as straightforward as this. Do these leaves as best as you can. Try and match what I did here. Because the way I did all these leaves. I personally do them slightly different in runs. Oh, by the way, just go onto this line. And shoot perpendicular to the wall. You get that jiggy. I do the leaves different in runs, but the way I did it there was the fastest way you can do it by taking it safe. So try to mimic what I do there. Hop down here, zoom in. You can jump onto the snare bird if you want, but some people are scared of that, so I just didn't do that here for the sake of demonstration. I'd recommend practicing this with this camera, but whatever way works best for you. Get the note. You can jump around this guy, or you can just kill that first guy. This second one, I would recommend doing what I do there. Activate him, then jump onto his platform after he goes back in. But for that first bird, you can just jump and peck to kill him if you want to play it safe. But what I did there was optimal, and I kind of did that just based off of muscle memory when I recorded this, so my bad. <laughs> Here, you're gonna just jump onto this feather, walk off, flutter onto this worm, down trot up and go and just leave. Tap A, smash A to flutter, land here, then just jump to the, the yellow ginger. Sorry for the choppiness, and then just leave the season. Oh, I didn't split. Summer.
Actually, no. Uh, you should be splitting when you enter the next next season. Ooh, this is really choppy. My bad. Here's here. Get the worm. I'm gonna do a big jump here. Activate the clucker first. Wait for him to go inside. Here and get this. Ball has a lot of lag, so lag reduction can be important, but you might not want to worry about that too much starting out. Make sure you go far to the left here, and then get into gold feathers, then jump up. That sniper's kind of difficult. Right here's the threshold, right there. Uh, so just jump in talent shot down here. Just cut the line, go to Mumba's hut. If you can. Get the worm. Try and jump up here in talent shot if you can. From this second note, do two jumps to the note, to the fourth note, then slide down left to go to the middle, to go to the the loading zone. Big jump off here. You can just do three big jumps here if you want. Get this worm. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow these collectibles, this order. From this note, you're going to do a somewhat big jump down, then quick dive off. Then you should be able to be in front of Naughty's. You can't just tap A, otherwise you won't make it towards where Naughty is. Jump onto this, do a double roll to get to that. Here, you're going to try and jump flutter towards the water. Try and quick dive like that. It's basically just getting in Talent Trot as you walk off. It's kind of difficult, but... Saves a little bit of time if you can pull it off. Sharp turn to the left here. You're gonna try and gold feather this as best as possible. If you want, you can even just jump off and get the gold feathers. What I did there was optimal, but it's a bit hard. You're gonna beak bust Gobi, that's what you do in this route. Here, you're gonna get this worm. Okay, just follow this route. Uh, this worm can be in awkward spots sometimes. You should definitely get the note and then the worm, if the worm's in a weird spot there. Here, I would definitely recommend killing all the birds, because you're gonna come back down here afterwards. Just kill this one, roll, jump, peck. Roll, jump, peck. You can even kill this Grublin if you really want to, but I didn't hear. That was an awkward camera. But, it's whatever. Hold straight left as you're entering here to land on that note right away. Then just get all four of these notes and the worm. Backflip out. Hold down while you're backflipping. Here. Just... Get into these alcoves and go to the shock bed as best as you can. You don't have to do these sections as fast as possible. You can even just do this out of Talent Trot if it makes you feel more comfortable. That's what I did starting out. If that Zub is in the way, make sure you're out of Talent Trot on the ground, then kill it. Don't jump in Talent Trot and peck in the air like that, because you'll have no momentum. Here, I rolled down left, then uh, dive towards the acorn. Here, I enter this room out of, uh, in Talent Trot, hold down, slide down the ramp a bit, big jump towards here. Obviously, you can take this a lot slower. Go around, backflip right under this, beak bust right before you get it. If you just go right here, then do a big jump straight forward, you'll always get that acorn. That's how I would recommend most people do that starting out. That, you should probably just jump down. But don't jump down as far down as I did there. I sort of just messed, uh, had muscle memory. For that room, you basically just want to hug the wall, the back wall, to help you push up onto the shelf. Um, or you can just backflip. But you sort of have to find the rhythm in order to make it to the notes without leaving Talent Trap. Make sure you're very close to Nabnut here and close to the tree. Uh, so you get the Jiggy as soon as he spawns it. 
so the Jiggy doesn't bounce. Here, you can just jump peck to kill this guy. Jump peck to kill that guy as well. This one, you should wait until he goes out, then goes in, then comes back out a second time to kill him. I would recommend the slope abuse strat to most people, because honestly, I think it's really easy, but I think it's intimidating for most people. This is the note order you should do here. Get that note, go this way around the tree. Try and have a similar camera that I do here. Something like that. It flipped a bit, but this is still a fine camera. After this uh, worm section, you're gonna jump onto this note. Then you're just gonna flutter down to this section right here. Do you see where my mouse is? Just flutter down there. Then you're gonna get into Talon Trot and then make it towards where the hive is. There's not really a point in entering Talon Trot for a second time. Yeah, the slope abuse is a lot easier than it looks. Because you can just jump on the slope and do a big neutral jump right when you land. And by the time the bird is away, you'll like be in the air. And it's easy to just go onto its platform. Jump down here in Talon Trot. I see a lot of people peck out of Talon Trot on the high for some reason. You can just jump out of Talon Trot and flutter. For Fall Clip, stick a bit to the right. This bull is in the way. Stick a bit to the right there. Uh... Wait till you stay stuck on the slope for a bit, then push yourself to the left where the hole is. You want to have that camera that I did right there, and just ta just hold straight forward on the joystick while you're falling down. Again, if you want a more in-depth description on how to do that, just go watch my RRBA tutorial in fall. I explain how to do that in depth. But for the purpose of this route demonstration, I won't go far in depth. Here you're going to take off this direction, Four, uh, 8 A presses, hold straight up make sh uh, to do a sharp turn down onto the hill, or the roof. You want to land in that snare bear, then do a big jump. Uh, pausing on that snare bear helps you to avoid getting a dropped input. Roll off here and flutter. Here, zoom in your camera before you take off, then just do like 6A presses, then beak bomb up. I'm not gonna peck here, don't peck, uh, that's just, you can learn that eventually when you feel more comfortable with flight. But yeah. 5 or 6A presses before the beak bomb should be sufficient in order to get up here. You wanna jump up, up, up here. It's just basically straight up on the joystick after the jiggy. Before you leave. Here. I think I actually messed this up a bit. From this note, do a big jump. And just tap A and hold A to land here. Then get the notes and go down like that. I just missed the note because I'm dumb. But. Obviously, if you miss the note like that, then you just, just fly back up. After you get that last note, just slide off. Sort of quick dive down. Here, right after the fourth flap, one, two, three, four, hold up, press A, turn towards Irie, and then do nine more A presses. And face all the way up on the joystick, hold all the way up, right after the ninth flap. So you're facing the jiggy. So now, after the cutscene, you can hold straight up uh, to get to the jiggy's level, and then you can let go of up to get the jiggy while it's bouncing. It's just like that. 3A presses, hold up a bit, and beak bump to the right of that little, the, the jiggy platform. Get the jiggy, roll off. Right in front of this black line right here, you want to stand to poop the eggs onto the window. In this room, just roll peck to this, get into talent and jump out if you can. Here, turn the camera three times quickly, and then just walk out. Then just run down the slope and get these notes as easy as possible. I like to turn the camera here. Uh, you can turn the camera the other way. If you want to kill this guy, peck out of Talon Trot before you kill him. Peck out of Talon Trot on the ground, then jump, then peck to kill him. If you, if he's in the way. To do this Winter Clip strat, I count eight. I'm gonna actually go back for that. I count eight flaps. Um. So it goes. 
One, two, three. Then go to the left, right, so he doesn't hit you. After the eight and a half flap about, so you're gonna count eight flaps. Kazooie's wings are gonna go all the way up. Right when Kazooie's wings go all the way up, then hold straight down and beak bomb right before you hit the ground. I have a. I'm not gonna go over how to do this. Just basically beak bomb right when your feet touches the last black line there. But um, I have a tutorial on Winter Clip Two. You can watch. You just look on the website or my YouTube. So yeah. Spring two simple because there's no soft lock, so you're just gonna same movement as spring one to get up here. If you want, you can talent trot up just like that. Wait for the bird to go away. This is where you would get the three notes if you decide to get them in spring two instead, which is optimal. And just jump through the brambles to get to Mumbo. So almost done here. I'm gonna transform. Ignore my token count. If you follow the token route, you should be at zero now. Should be. Here you're gonna do count uh, 14 A presses, including the jump at the beginning. Just do 14 A presses. Should be, get you at a good height to just land on the snare bear. And just hop down and walk down the hive. Tap A here and hold up a tiny bit. Don't move right or left at the, on the joystick at all on the way to the Jinjo. Fly into this corner while holding B. Don't mash A, just hold B. And then just leave the level. Here, do 7 A presses. Land on this. Jump down left. You can either land or right before you land, press A. And you should be able to get to this level. Should be able to get to the door. And you just enter. Obviously jump flutter, or jump and fly in between each text box. Oh, I didn't, I didn't split for anything. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Seasons are confusing. So, Furnace Farm is pretty straightforward. To do Nimpok Skip, you want to slide from the Joker Score to the Death Tile uh, very slowly. Hold straight up on the joystick. Well, not straight up. Hold slightly up on the joystick. Crouch and mash Z or uh, mash uh, C left to get into Talent Trap as you cross over. In between each tile, there's one pixel line where you can do moves. So, if you get into Talent Trap as you walk onto the Death Square, you can enter Talent Trap on the Death Square, and then since you're in Talent Trap while you're and while you're talking to the Death Square, uh, your recoil will be different. So answer the question wrong in the Death Square, obviously. If that happens, that means you just got into Talent Trap on the pixel instead of sliding onto the Death Square. Let's get the question wrong. If you get a picture question, then use the Joker Square on these two tiles and go do the same thing on this Death Square. But yeah. Again, more in-depth video on that and the Grunty Fight is in my RBA tutorial playlist if you want to take a look. This video will show a pretty optimal Grunty Fight. Decently optimal for beginner strats. But yeah, make sure you take a wide turn around that cauldron to not wake him up. Ignore this jiggy count. If you did everything right, you would have... Um... Six Jiggies. 900 notes, obviously. Get whatever collectibles you think you need here. At the very least, all you need to get the eggs. And this is the egg door. I think I messed up Ding Pot Skip a bit. For Ding Pot Skip, you want to jump in Talent Trap from this black dot right there. I think I go back. From right here, peck into it like that. That would have worked if, if I didn't already trigger it. I said jump down left from there. Ignore the music, that was just splicing. <laughs> Anyways, Grunty Fight, run into this wall, Beak Bust, right after he, she laughs. Start pooping eggs straight down. Hold down. 
flutter forward, skip both the text boxes, roll into this parapet, beak bust, then you should be able to slide forward onto that. Shoot three eggs as she's flying back, then for each of these, just shoot six eggs forward. You should get her every time. Even there I missed, but whatever. Shoot six eggs forward. Again, there's more uh, info on how Grunty works in my RRB tutorial playlist if you want to watch that. For this, just beak bust right before the green beam hits you, then take off, then spam B to hit her. If you did it right before the green beam, if you beak bust it right before the green beam hits you, then you should get that recoil. And if you get this recoil, that initial recoil, and turn to the left, Grunty should always go in the direction that, like, she went there for me. If you hit Grunty while she's moving sideways, it's a very big hitbox, so you can just press A and beak bomb her broom or so. Yeah. For this, I like to run towards this gold feather and hold R. Then run in circles. Once you get that good camera, right about here is where you want to stand. Oops, six eggs straight down right after the fireball, and it should work. In general, if you don't want to get hit by the fireballs, you can run in circles. Because Grunty will never hit you if you run in circles. Unless it's the green beam, of course. Turn the camera once to see. Uh, try and aim for these Jinjo statues as best as possible. Kazooie aims very slightly to the left when you shoot, so keep that in mind to account for how to aim. Alternatively, you can just go up close to the Jinjo statues if you need to. Jump under Grunty when the Jinjos are going above you so it hits her as fast as possible. And yeah, should be mostly it. Walk to the right and left here. Just change directions right after you hear her throw the, the fireball. Use a medium zoom camera, beak bus here. Go in the middle, make sure you don't see the grate down here at all. If you don't see the grate, then you should be at a good position. You're going to shoot three eggs straight forward, go to the right, shoot two eggs, Go back here, shoot two eggs, wait for this fireball to disappear, then shoot three eggs here, five eggs into this. If you did it right, you should either gold feather or just take a hit, then shoot five eggs here, and we're done. GG. Oh no. Ah, ah, ah. GG. It's like a 208. Would have been probably faster, like a 207, if I didn't pause along the way for a couple places. A scuff splits. <laughs> GG. So that was a demonstration for 100% no fan beginner route, uh, no RBA, no FFM, there's no soft lock. It should be the beginner route if anyone wants to learn this category. If you want to learn anything more in depth, either take a look at the Banjo website and search for tricks by level, or just look uh, at my BK100% FFM or RBA tutorial playlist. Because every individual level there, every individual route is mostly the same and covers most of the tricks. So you can just see a more, descripti more descriptive um, explanation there if you need to. I hope this demonstrates the route and some beginner strats well enough. And I'll see you later.